Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Box. Aryan here, and today we are diving into one of the most important optimization techniques called calling. Calling is all about improving performance by not rendering things you can't see. Let's break down the different types of calling and how to use them effectively. First up, Frostem calling. This one's straightforward. Unity automatically skips rendering objects outside the camera's view. For example, if a cube is behind the camera, Unity won't bother drawing it. No setup needed, it just works out of the box. Next is occlusion calling, which skips rendering objects hidden behind other objects. For example, furniture behind a wall won't be drawn. To use this, open window rendering occlusion calling. Mark objects as static. Bake the occlusion data. This is super useful in scenes with lots of interiors or tight spaces. Unity's built-in occlusion calling performs runtime calculations on the CPU. Occlusion calling is therefore most likely to result in performance improvements when a project is GPU-bound due to overdraw. Unity loads occlusion calling data into memory at runtime. You must ensure that you have sufficient memory to load this data. Occlusion calling works best in scenes where a small, well-defined areas are clearly separated from one another by solid game objects. Uh, a common example is rooms connected by corridors. LOD or level of details calling reduces the complexity of objects as they move further away. Here's how to set it up. Add an LOD group to your object. Assign lower resolution models to each LOD level. Unity automatically switches between them based on the distance. LOD calling will reduce the amount of triangles in the scene and also reduce the micro triangles. Micro triangles are extremely small triangles in a 3D mesh, often resulting from dense geometry or poor LOD setup. They can cause performance issues because the GPU spends significant resources processing them. For we know where we have to set the transition amount, uh, we can go to wireframe mode and go far away until you see that it becomes very small dots and uh, it's hard to see the space behind it. Now it's time to change the model to a lower quality. If you are using the HDRP, you can easily open up the rendering debug window and set the debug to density. It will show you the dense soft wrinkles when you go far away and when it becomes red, it's time to change the LOD. Layer calling lets you hide objects on specific layers. This can be done in the camera settings or with a simple script. You can get the camera and set the layer you want to render. It's handy for debugging or hiding objects during gameplay. Distance calling hides objects based on how far they are from the camera. You can set distances for specific layers using this code. The code will assign the distance for 32 layers. If you don't set the distance for any layer, it will declare as infinity. This is great for open world games where far away objects don't need to be rendered. When to use distance calling and LOD. If your object has only one mesh, no lower quality versions, use distance calling to hide it beyond a certain range. If your object has multiple LOD levels, use LOD for smoother transition between details instead. Backface calling escapes rendering the backs of objects. For example, the inside faces of a cube won't be drawn. This is enabled by default with shaders using callback. In the material section of any object, you have a render face which can be front or back or both. If you set it to only the front, it will call the back face. Sometimes you gotta take control. Custom calling lets you disable objects 
based on your own rules. For example, you can check the distance of cube and camera in every frame with vector3.distance. And if it's bigger than a value, you can just call the cube or run other functions. Super useful for dynamic stuff like enemies or interactive objects. Plus, you can target specific components, scripts, colliders, or objects to disable. But this one is expensive because it should run every frame in the update. Unity also calls shadows outside the lights range. In URP, you can tweak this in your URP assets. Just go to URP assets, find the shadows, and set the max distance. And if you want to have a level of details for your shadows, add cascade count and then the shadow of far away object will render in a lower quality. But in HDRP, you can just add a shadow profile to your global volume and set the values there. The last one, which is only available for Unity 6 or later, it's the GPU occlusion calling, also known as the GPU residence drawer. This uses your GPU to handle occlusion calling at runtime. To enable it, go to project settings, graphics, and set the batch render group variance to keep all. In URV, you can go to URV assets and enable it in the rendering section. And in HDRP, just go to your HDRP assets and enable GPU residence drawer. No baking is required, everything updates dynamically, and this will reduce rendering work on the CPU. If your game target is new hardware and it's open world, I highly recommend using GPU occlusion calling over the normal occlusion calling. That's all about calling from FrostSem to GPU occlusion. Each technique plays a role in optimizing your game. These are the methods I know. If I missed any, let me know in the comments.